Good evening. Uh, my name is Sadat Nene. I'm B Tech and VIT. I'll be talking about the helium uh, neon laser, its construction and its working. Starting with the construction of the helium neon laser, uh, if you can notice, the tube where the lasing action takes place consists of a glass envelope with a narrow capillary tube uh, through the center. The capillary tube is designed to direct the electrical discharge through its small bore to produce very high current densities in the gas. The output coupler and the HR mirror are located at the opposite ends of the plasma tube. To make the laser more economical and durable, manufacturers often attach the mirror directly to the ends of the capillary tube as shown in the picture. Now, this is very common with small low power lasers. With high power tubes or when optically Polarized output is desired, the capillary tube's ends are cut at an angle and sealed with glass panels called Brewster windows. When this is done, then the mirrors must be m mounted in mechanically stable but adjustable mounts. This allows the operator to align the mirror surfaces parallel to each other but perpendicular to the axis of the capillary tube. Now the plasma tube has a large cylindrical meta metallic cathode and a smaller metallic anode. The current is directed from cathode to anode. In the figure shown, the gas reservoir provides a supply of extra gas. This reservoir helps to maintain a low pressure over long periods of time and provides extra gas to replace any gas that may escape through the tube or through the seals where the loads pass through the glass envelope. Usually, all helium neon plasma tubes have a gas reservoir. Now, coming to the function of the helium neon laser. In the helium neon laser, the light is produced by atomic transitions within the neon atom. The helium does not directly produce the laser light, but it acts as a buffer gas, the purpose of which is to assign or help the atoms of the other gas to produce lasing in as manner. When energy from the pumping source is applied, helium neon gas mixture, then some of the energy is observed by the helium atoms. In other words, we can say that the helium atoms achieve an excited state. Now when the helium atoms move within the laser tube, they collide with the neon atoms. At each collision, some of the energy within the helium atom is transferred to the neon atom and so raising it to an excited metastable energy state. When a sufficient number of neon atoms reach to this stage, then population inversion occurs and hence the lasing can take place. Now we can explain this using uh, a simplified energy level diagram. Now in the energy level diagram, there are three downward energy transitions for neon that produce lasing. If the transition occurs at the relatively small energy step from E4 to E5, E5 to E4, then low energy infrared photon is released with a wavelength of 3.391 microns. However, if transition occurs at E5 to E2, which is much larger energy step, then it produces short wavelength, more energetic photon at 632.8 nanometer. This gives the red light which is most desirable for helium neon laser applications. Now E3 to E2, it produces a laser output at 1.152 microns in infrared portion of the spectrum. Now, in all helium neon lasers, the feedback mechanism consists of a pair of coated mirrors. The coating is usually a reflecting mirror and 95 to 99% of the light and output coupler the reflection of the output mirror must be higher if the active medium is short in length because the gain of the active medium is low. So if the active medium is longer, more gain is produced and a larger percentage of the beam can be provided as an output. Therefore, in the helium neon laser, with a longer active medium, the reflectivity of the output coupler can be less. That's just a point to note. Now coming to the applications of the helium neon laser. Firstly, helium neon lasers are produced in large quantities for many years. They are used in colleges, schools, universities, and use them for many college experiments. The helium neon lasers are also used in supermarket checkouts to read barcodes and QR codes. The helium laser can also be used as an alignment tool, and it is also used in guns for targeting. Now, coming to the advantages and the disadvantages of this type of laser. Helium neon laser has very good coherence property. It can produce three wavelengths that of 1.152 micrometer, 3.391 micrometer, and 632.8 nanometer, in which 632.8 nanometer is the most common because it is visible usually in red color. Helium neon lasers 
are also much less costlier than other types of lasers. They provide inherent safety due to low power output. So these are some of the advantages of uh, helium neon lasers. Now coming to the disadvantages. It is a relatively low power device which means its output power is low. To obtain single wavelength laser light, the other two wavelengths of laser need suppression which is also done by many other techniques and devices. So it requires extra technical skill to operate it. Now high voltage requirement also high voltage requirement of this type of, near, of laser is also considered as a disadvantage. Now escaping of gas from laser plasma tube is also another disadvantage. One of the questions that arise about the helium neon laser is well, why is there a requirement of more than two levels in helium neon laser? This is because <clears throat> in helium neon laser for stimulated emission to take place there should be population inversion. But in two-level laser, metastable state does not exist. In an exaggerated state, no population inversion can take place. So, <clears throat> lasing action cannot take place in two-level lasers. Hence, they require more than two, level two levels in helium neon laser. So, this is the construction and functioning, the applications, the advantages and the disadvantages of the helium neon laser. Thank you.